Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with JCR Off-Road. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to install both our half and full rack assembly for the Ford Bronco. So we're gonna begin this video by showing you how to install this rear half rack portion, and then we'll come back and show you how to add on the front full rack section if you choose to add that later on. So you can begin this by assembling the rack in the side rail section. For that, you're gonna have three of these extruded aluminum crossbars. These are gonna have a slot cut out on one end here. Um, that's just gonna be so that you can slide in the hardware to mount your accessories later on. Ideally, you put those all to one side and facing up so they're easy to access later. Once you have those all facing the same direction, you can start with one side rail. These are gonna be going into these longer slots here at the top of the rails. And then you'll install these with a quarter inch button head bolt and washer. Now being that these are stainless bolts going into aluminum, it's not a bad idea to use a little bit of anti-seize on here so that these don't corrode to one another and you can always move them and adjust them later on. I'm gonna hold off on that right now so I don't make a mess during the video. I'm just gonna do that same thing all the way along this side rail before I move to the other side. With the rear rack portion assembled, you can grab the mounts labeled M and R. You'll want the inner mounts, which are gonna look like this here. You're gonna to need to install this single layer adhesive rubber to the bottom side of the mount, which will be the inside of this step down here like so. For that, you can just start from one edge, peel back this adhesive and kind of square that up with the edge and work that all the way across, making sure you get that secured nice and tight to the mount, work it nice and tight around these radiuses and even use a screwdriver or something flat if necessary to push down to the inside of this radius here. And you can kind of do what I'm doing here, where I just peel part of that backing. I've got it squared up on the edge and nice and secure here. And then I'm gonna work this around and down and in tight to that radius. So what you're gonna be left with is something that looks about like this. And that way, everywhere that this mount contacts the roof surface, it's gonna be protected with that single layer of rubber. So you can repeat that same process on the intersection amounts marked R and M, and then we'll get those installed on the rack. So once you have that adhesive stuck to all the inner mounts, you can grab your rack. The front, if I didn't mention it yet, is gonna be this pointed section here, and each of these mounts is gonna have an arrow pointing forward. So these are gonna install, here I'm doing the mid mount marked with an M, arrow pointing forward, and they'll install like that with another quarter inch button head bolt out here and a flange locking nut on the inside. And then since these will have to come back out once this rack is placed up on the vehicle to get the outer section of the mount in place, I'm just gonna hand tighten these for now. Rear mount's gonna install the same way marked with an R, arrow pointing forward, and then here to the inside of this side rail. So with this all assembled, we're simply going to place it here on top of the roof. Kind of be careful as you get this set down. And then you just wanna make sure that all these mounts sit down nice and flat in each of the factory little indentations in this rear roof section.
Once you have the rack sitting in place, you're ready to install the outer clamshell bracket. Now for this, you're gonna to need to remove this hardware that you hand tightened before. These are also gonna have a rubber adhesive backing that needs to be put in place. You wanna make sure that this gets lined up roughly right here inside of that radius and leaves you with enough material to be pressed tight down inside of this tight corner here. And then once that adhesive's on, it's just a matter of bolting these in place right there along with that inner bracket. Now one thing I did want to mention before you remove the hardware and kind of leave this corner of the rack hanging loose for just a moment, it's a good idea to tuck a rag underneath here just to prevent any damage or scratches to the roof. And then before these mounts go on, you just wanna make sure just like the inside mounts to pay attention, they're gonna be labeled rear and mid. They're also gonna have forward facing arrows. And those should easily slide in, in line with these factory cutouts. And you can reinstall this hardware. Now you can go repeat that process on the other three mounts before we tighten anything in place. So after you have all those mounts loosely in place, you can work your way around, tightening them up one at a time. Now, the one thing you wanna pay attention to here is just making sure that this inner mount is pushed down tight to the roof surface as you tighten this up. You want to make sure you come back and tighten these crossbars as well. Since we don't have any accessories up here just yet, I'm just going to put these all right in the center. So if you're only installing the half rack, that's really all there is to it. If you're going to be installing the full rack section, keep watching. We'll show you how that goes on now. So to get started on the front section for the full rack, we're going to come up here and remove the factory accessory ready caps. These just have a little push tab here at the back. You can push in with your finger and pop those out. And then you'll need a 10 millimeter socket to remove the two nuts here. Then you can lift off the factory black plastic clip and install our mounting bracket. Now, this bracket is gonna be labeled with an F, so that makes it nice and obvious. They really should only go in one way since these holes are offset, but an easy way to tell is this single hole is gonna to go toward the outside of the vehicle. So then you can grab this black plastic piece again, and then looking here at the bottom, you're gonna have a couple tabs as well as this small ridge on the side that need to be shaved off before this can be reinstalled. I'm just using an air saw here. You could probably cut these off or even just sand them down with a little grinder whatever it takes to get them removed. So then once you have that cleaned up, it should just slide right back down on those two studs. And then you can reinstall the factory nuts. Then you wanna use some caution when you're tightening these back up because they are just a small six millimeter 
So I'm going to leave the impact to the side for now and snug these up by hand. Then you can grab your plastic outer cover and before this can snap back down inside of here, you're going to need to modify this a little bit. You're going to want to come in and cut off essentially this wider, roughly eighth inch thick outer flange running the full length of this piece. So obviously you guys didn't just see me do it, but I took this down to a bench, cut that off with just a cutoff wheel on our four and a half inch grinder, and then hit it lightly with some sandpaper to clean up the edge. So you're kind of left with something like this. This is the piece that was removed. And then you should be able to take this and hook it back on the front edge and then pushing in on the back tab, get that to snap back down in place. Then you'll just need to repeat that installation process for the driver's side mount. So with those front mounts in place, we'll need to assemble a couple things here before we can get the rest of the rack installed. We're gonna start with this front fairing. The only thing that goes on this is gonna be the provided edge trim. To get that on, you just need to start basically just past this point, really on either end. And then you're just gonna work this up onto the front edge. It's just kind of a tight press fit, working all the way along to this other point. And then once you're close out here, you can kind of mark because obviously you're gonna have some extra length, figure out where you wanna cut this off. And then using something like these tin snips, just go ahead and get rid of that excess. Now, one thing I will show you real quick is this edge trim does have like a aluminum structure inside of here when you cut it you can get some sharp pieces like this that'll be hanging out of the end. You just wanna make sure you get those removed so they don't make contact with the paint on the vehicle once this is installed. And then you can finish pushing that up in place. What you'll be left with is something like this that's now protected anywhere that it contacts the paint or the roof surface on the vehicle. Now you're also gonna receive this rear fairing section with your full rack kit, as well as another piece of edge trim. That one's gonna install pretty much the exact same way, just making sure you reach point to point anywhere that that's gonna contact the roof. Once you have those out of the way, you're also gonna need to assemble each side rail. So for these, you can kind of see these look really similar, but the ends down here are different. You're gonna want this longer one to sit over top of the other one that's gonna be the outside of your rail. So you need to kind of assemble these as a left and a right. And then on the inside of that, you're gonna have this smaller section that's just gonna sandwich in right here. And these can be put together with your longer black button head hardware. Now I am gonna leave these just a little bit loose right now so that we have a little compliance here as we go to place this over the front edge of that back rack section. And you'll wind up with something that looks just like this. So then for these three holes along the side here, you'll use the shorter of your black button head bolts. So with all this assembled, we can go get the fairing and the side rails installed. So now before this fairing goes on, we do recommend picking up some 3M or equivalent paint protection film to go in place down here on the painted surface, anywhere that this edge trim might make contact with it once installed. 
That's just going to protect your paint long term from any dust, dirt, debris that might get stuck between this edge trim seal and the painted surface. So then this part's pretty straightforward. You've got three holes here on each end of the fairing, three holes in each mount. You're just going to need to place this over top of each mount. It doesn't hurt to have the help of a friend to hold onto that one side so you don't let it drop down and hit the windshield or the paint as you're getting this installed. And as we've done with most of this rack so far, you're just going to get these in finger tight. And then we'll go ahead and start working on the side rails. That way you have some up and down adjustment here as we're getting those in place. Then you can move to installing these side rails. Here in the back, you just want to make sure that your back rack section winds up in between the outer and inner pieces. I kind of placed a rag here just so that that can't drop down and touch the roof surface. And then I'm going to come up to the front and get at least one of these bolts started to hold the front edge up off the roof as well. Then here at the back, you're going to be using more of your long black hardware. You can go ahead and line this up and get that pushed through all three panels. flange lock nut on the back side and then once you have both of these in you can jump back to the front and finish installing that front hardware. Once all this is in place you can jump to the other side and install that driver side side rail in the exact same manner and then once you get that in you can come back and tighten up all your remaining hardware. So after you've tightened everything up here you're ready to put these crossbars in. These, you just want to pay attention again to the slots, make sure they're in the same orientation as that rear section. And then if you're doing it by yourself, like I am here, I went ahead and placed a rag over on the other side of the roof so that I'm not going to scratch it with that sitting loose over there right now. And then I'm going to line this up and install these with more quarter 20 stainless button heads and washers. So once I get this tight here, I can run over there and install two more button heads and then work our way along installing the rest of the crossbars the same way. And lastly, you can grab your rear fairing, slide that between these two rear side rails and install four more of these quarter inch button heads to finish out your install. Now the last thing we want to mention as you're tightening down both this front and that rear fairing is to make sure that you get those pushed down so they're making contact with the roof line so that you don't get any flutter or wind noise as you're going down the road. So when you're installing this rack on a two-door Bronco, the only real difference you're gonna encounter is gonna be right here at the mid-mount location. The reason this is different is because Ford did not provide mounting provisions like they did back here, as well as two locations on the four-door Broncos for a factory roof rack. So due to this being a little bit different here, your two-door mid-mounts are going to look just like this. This is going to be your outer section, and this will be the inner. So here on the outer mount section, the only real difference in how you install this is going to be when installing the rubber to the mount. You're just going to install it here to this smaller flange section, as well as this larger flat face here. You don't want to push this down in around this radius like you did on the rear mount. Reason for that is because if you get it down in that radius, it's not gonna sit in here like it should on this factory hardtop. Mm -hmm. Then moving to the inner mid-mount section, you're just gonna install the rubber to these two faces that sit down on the top and allow these mounting holes here to line up with those to locate that in place. One thing we do wanna mention when you're installing this outer section is when you're doing this for the very first time, you may have to put a little bit of pressure in here on the mount to get it to push down into this slot. So you're gonna wanna get both the front and the rear mounts installed before moving to this mid mount, since those are gonna locate the rack here on the top. And then you can come back and use the rail to locate these mounts along the side. 
Once you get both those in place, it's just gonna be these quarter inch button head bolts with washers along with serrated flange nuts to hold them in place. Then with your 5 30 seconds hex, you can tighten these up and go do the same thing on the other side. And that's really it for this roof rack install. So if you guys have any questions about this installation or any other JCR off-road product, you can go ahead and reach out to us. Give us a phone call at 269-353-1184 or shoot us an email at info at jcroffroad.com.